everyone, I am in Columbia, Kentucky. The town calls itself the gym of Kentucky. I can see it, it's a lovely downtown. That's where I'm at. Check out this county courthouse. Columbia is the Adair County seat. This courthouse was built in 1885. Gothic architecture. It's a beauty. Looks like they're doing some renovation on it, which you like to see. As I explore this picturesque downtown, let me tell you some information about Columbia. There are 4,800 people here. That's peak population. The town is growing. Uh, median age here is 25, which is very young. For the U.S. it's 39. It's because of the local college here, Lindsay Wilson College. About 2,600 students, so while that is small, there's only 4,800 people here, so it skews the numbers. 86% of this town is white, 5% Hispanic, 4% black, 3% mixed. Before I go any further, I'll tell you that today is Monday, the day after Thanksgiving. It's about 9.30 in the morning. It's pretty chilly. 35 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 2 degrees Celsius. Yeah, I'm trying to explore this downtown, but there's so much traffic. These cars are just barreling through here. And I'm risking my life, I feel like. <laughs> anyway, okay. I'm safely across the street. What else can I tell you? Median household income. It's $45,500 a year. That's $875 a week. Poverty is pretty good here. 18% overall. Children 17 and under, it's 15%. Folks 65 and older, it's 19%. Those numbers are all a little higher than the U.S. Uh, as a whole, but the cost of living here is 19% less than the rest of the U.S. So it's not bad numbers in actuality. Now are you guys ready for the crime numbers? They are shocking. Shockingly low. Latest numbers, four incidents per 1,000 people. The U.S. is 23. Incredibly low crime. This is a town of almost 5,000 people. They had 18 crimes total last year. 18 in a town of 5,000. 13 of those were property crimes. Five were violent. What other number can I give you guys? Well, uh, let's see. Median home value here is 117,000. That is considerably less than the U.S. So, that is part of the low cost of living here. It doesn't cost a lot to buy a house. Of course, Christmas is in full swing. A little manger scene here. I like it. The town has some interesting history. That is to say, when it comes to bank robbers. In April 1872, the Cole Younger Gang, and we're talking about Jesse James, Frank James, Cole Younger, John Younger, and Clell Miller, robbed the Bank of Columbia. They killed the cashier and injured several of the men that were inside the bank, including a judge. The bandits made off with $1,600 in cash. Now that was big money back in the 1870s. 
none of those guys were hurt and it has went down in history as one of the great bank robberies of the area they reenact it every year here uh, for a festival that they have in the city I've got a house here that looks like it's been sitting empty for a while I wonder what the story is behind that it's boarded up I'm surprised to see it because the rest of the downtown is very nice it's a beautiful little downtown anchored by that absolutely gorgeous courthouse I'm on the campus of Lindsay Wilson College uh, I am here to see this right there that is the Begley Chapel on the hill Get a better look at it. Designed by E. Fay Jones, an architect that was a disciple of Frank Lloyd Wright. It's considered among the greatest, or the best anyway, chapel designers in history. So let's go take a look. It's a very unique looking building. Supposed to be able to go inside not sure if we actually can though because I saw a couple students just pull on the doors and they didn't go in oh nope I sure can go in it's nice huh It's beautiful, isn't it? Wow. Well, how about if we check out a residential street or two? I'm just off downtown, a couple blocks. Beautiful old houses. I'll check out this rock house. Yeah, that house will last forever. <laughs> kind of a lot different than the other houses here that are wooden. I'm surprised. But they are beautiful. Well, there's that uh, beautiful courthouse again. As I turn into another residential street. It's pretty, isn't it? Yeah, this is, this is a pretty town, it really is. You see this everywhere here. What did I say median home value was here? 117,000? Ah, these houses are awesome. Another rock house there. The town sits on these hills.
I am impressed. Let's head to the next town. Alright everyone, I am in Glasgow, Kentucky. That is the Barron County Courthouse, built in 1966. Colonial architecture. It anchors the city square here. In Glasgow. Well, let me tell you about Glasgow. Of course, it was named after the one in Scotland. And for many years here, they had something called the Highland Games that celebrated everything Scotland and the Scottish way of life. It appears that COVID killed it for now, but I do understand they're trying to bring it back. It was a pretty big deal. About 20,000 people a year would come to it. Anyway, about the town. A little over 15,000 people here. Median age is 42. That's a little bit older. 83% of the town is white. 7% is Hispanic. 7% is black. Last 3% is mixed race. Let's see what we have here. Uh, it is a Confederate statue on the grounds of the county courthouse. Our Confederate dead, 1861-1865. Yeah, there's nothing in the back. Interesting. There's a theater over here that I want to show you. But while I'm on my way there, a couple other things. Median household income is $38,700 a year. That's $744 a week. That's about half what it is in the U.S. as a whole. Cost of living here is 17% lower. Poverty is pretty high. 27%. Children 17 and under it is 40%. That is very high. Folks 65 and older, it's 15%. Housing here, though, is 44% lower than the rest of the country. Median home value in this town is 127000 Now here's this Plaza Theater. Built in 1934. It has had many famous performers perform in those walls. That's cool looking, isn't it? Look at that architecture up there. Here are some of the people who have performed inside that theater. Minnie Pearl, Loretta Lynn, the Carter family, Flatten Scruggs, Dolly Parton, uh, Roy Rogers, Gene Autry, and Dinah Shore. Man, that is some history. That is some big name people. It's such a cool looking building too. I saw this big mural. Glasgow, Kentucky. I'm sure you've all heard of Diane Sawyer, the noted TV journalist. She was born and raised here. This is her hometown. It is a madhouse here, a madhouse. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, uh, let's go check out some residential, specifically a historic house that I wanna show you here. Let's go there first. The house that I'm walking to, I just want to show you these really old steps, because these is, have been here since the late 1700s when this house was built. 
Let me give you a shot of it. This is Spotswood. This is where George Washington, our first president, this is where his niece lived with her husband, Alexander Spotswood. He was a Revolutionary War General. This is on the National Register, obviously. I'm not getting too close because it is a private residence now. Yeah, could you imagine that? Uh, living in a house that George Washington himself had been inside. It's amazing, isn't it? It's real close to downtown. Downtown is right there. So with that, let's go see some other houses in the area. So this is a neighborhood near Spotswood. That's got a very colonial vibe to it, that house. That looks like something you would see in Massachusetts. This one too. Beautiful though, aren't they? I'm on the other side of town. Let's see what the houses here look like. Yeah, still pretty nice, huh? You can see a lot of the town looks just like this. Now look at this house here. Now that's beautiful. Both of these are. Ooh, that's a lot of blue, isn't it? Not sure how I feel about that. I've got a house here. Definitely needs some work. Hopefully someone will renovate that. It's a pretty awesome town though. Okay, well guys, got one more town to visit. And while there, there is a really cool museum that Nicole and I are going to go see and uh, of course, we're going to have an early dinner. So that's coming up next. Everyone, I am in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Checking out this awesome city hall. I'm downtown. Just looking around. Purple Heart City. Now they got a statue up here see what this is shall we it's a great old building here uh, let's see now that the Sun is behind it Department of the Army in honor and memory of our brave men and women of the United States military that is pretty cool isn't it there are 75,000 people here so it's pretty good sized Bowling Green is the home of Western Kentucky University. About 17,000 students, so it's pretty good sized. And that will explain the young age of the town. Median age here is 31. I am approaching Fountain Square Park, the very heart of downtown. It is lovely down here. Very busy. Here's a bit more about the town. It is 65% white, 12% black, 
10% Hispanic, 7% Asian, last 5% mixed race. It's a diverse town, isn't it? A lot of great architecture down here. It's fantastic. The uh, median household income here is 45800 a year. That's 880 a week. There's the fountain. That is the star of Fountain Square, but it doesn't look like it's uh, in operation. Hmm. Probably because it's winter. Or about to be winter. Well, there's still some water in there. but no fountain. I bet it looks awesome when it's working. Well, let's see a few other numbers. Poverty, it's pretty high here. 29%. Children 17 and under, it is 37%. Folks 65 and older, it's 20%. Uh, cost of living, 11% lower than the U.S. as a whole. Median home value in this town is $247,000. So, houses are pretty pricey. That's just a little lower than the U.S. of $321,000. Cool old theater there. Always like to see that. Crime here is pretty high. Because it's a bigger city, I guess? I don't know. I mean, the first town we visited, very low crime. Second one, bigger town, a little bit higher crime, but still acceptable. But here, it's quite high. 41 incidents per 1,000 people. That's almost twice higher than the U.S. of 23. It is well over 90% property crime, though. 38 of those 41 were property crime. Three were violent. I'm wondering if that's because of the university. College kids, they get in trouble, you know. Blow steam off. I'm thinking that's what it is. Because we've been here for three days, and this town does not feel dangerous at all. It's actually real nice. We like it a lot. I gotta tell you guys, the neighborhoods in the downtown area are impressive. I mean, look at these houses. Wow. I mean, am I right? It's amazing neighborhoods. something wow look at that house that is incredible now did you guys know that Corvettes are built here yeah that's right all Corvettes since 1981 Every Corvette, that year or later, is built right here in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And they have a Corvette museum. Want to check it out? Yeah, I think that's uh, what we'll do next. I'm going to grab Nicole. And we're going to go to the Corvette Museum. It looks really cool. So, that's coming up next. We are at the National Corvette Museum. There's Nicole right there. We're going to find out everything there is to know 
about Corvettes. America's sports car. Everything. Everything. We are inside the museum now. We've got to pay our fee, but we've got some Corvettes right off the bat. Yeah, beautiful Colors. Stingray. Colors really pretty. I want that, but with a convertible. And I want a 69. This is a 70. Wow, you're picky, aren't you? Yeah, that's beautiful, though. I would take this. <laughs> I would be happy to have that in my driveway. We don't have a driveway. Well, if we had a driveway. <laughs> <laughs> I got a newer one here. Beautiful. The love affair begins. They got a 53 Corvette here that has been restored. One of the first 300 built. She is a beauty. And of course, if you're at the Corvette Museum, you gotta see pop culture references, Barbie, they just show Prince singing Little Red Corvette. <laughs> I didn't know Barbie drove a Corvette. She sure does, doesn't she? Oh, check it out. Snoopy in a Corvette. I used to have a Barbie Corvette. You did? Uh-huh. Me too. No, just kidding, I didn't. I couldn't fit in it though. It was too much. 55 V8 Corvette. This is when they started really rocking. A little bitty car with that big V8 in it. You don't like that one? I don't see one sticking her head all the way out of her window to see it though. Oh yeah, she will. <laughs> all those people will be like, whoa, look at that when it drives by. She's practically halfway out of her window. I know. That's that's how awesome a car it is. That is so beautiful. This is the race car that they tested the V8 that they ended up putting in 54 Corvettes. We've got Corvette music. Corvette music, yeah. Anyway, they tested it in this car. Ah, these are cool. You don't really ever see these on the road. What? That car is awesome. It's bizarre looking. This is pretty. So. You're bizarre looking. This is pretty. This is the 69 Manta Ray Corvette. See that long outstretched hood. The cool paint job. Uh, here's one of the new ones. I'm going to have them deliver this to the uh, my driveway, okay? This is a experimental electric car. Wow, look at that. Called the Cosmic Invader. <laughs> that is... Well, that is different. <laughs> when did it say it was built? 70s? 1970s. Yeah, yeah, 70s. How about that? At first, I just thought it said the idea came in the 70s, but yeah. Well, uh, this is a treat. It's the Batmobile. This is the Michael Keaton Batmobile, isn't it? Yeah, what would be a treat would be if we got to ride inside of it. <laughs> that would be a treat, wouldn't it? That is some car. And there's Batman behind on the other side. There's a Batman over here too. This is a more muscly Batman. Yeah, he's he's a meaner looking, isn't he? The Batman. He's my favorite superhero. Well, this is not a Corvette, but it's cool. The popcorn wagon. So it makes popcorn in the back there. See that? Wow. And they 
like at a paddy wagon too. I didn't think we were allowed to say that anymore. Why? I don't know. My dad used to literally drive a paddy wagon, and he's not allowed to say it anymore. Really? It's a term. It's paddies. They were Irish people, and they're. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, you didn't know that. That. Yeah. I'm half Irish. I don't care. Don't bother I, me then. You did know what that term meant, though, right? No. Yeah, that's what that meant. Okay. Cool. We are going to have an early dinner at Novo Dolce Gastro Pub. Very highly regarded here. Did you say it's number one? TripAdvisor rates it number one. Yeah, yeah the people of Trip, TripAdvisor. Better be number one. Yeah, so uh, let's go see if it is as good as they say it is. All right, so we're sitting down. Kind of in the back corner, aren't we? <laughs> It's a cozy little place. You can see the bar over there. Our appetizers are here. We are having bacon wrapped dates. They are stuffed with goat cheese. I have never had dates in my life. This will be my first time. Also, we're having stuffed mushrooms, right? Stuffed mushrooms. And they have pimento cheese and sausage in there. Okay. And, and I've already started. And you've already started trying them. I and how are they? It. I was hungry. Mushrooms are good. I actually like the dates even more. That's the one I wasn't ordering. <laughs> even with the goat cheese, and you don't like goat cheese. I don't like goat cheese, goat cheese by itself in like large amounts. But in oh. the appetizer, it's in there sparingly, and all the flavors went well together. Okay. Well, I'm going to try myself. So I think Nicole's right. Those dates are fantastic. Uh, really good. A little bit of sweetness to them, and the bacon offsets that a little bit perfectly. I like, I like whatever the drizzle is on top, too. Yeah, the drizzle, it's like a balsamic, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I guess it is, yeah. Yeah, and so, yeah, they're good. Uh, first time having dates, I like them. And the stuffed mushrooms are good, but not as good. You can taste the sausage in there. Still. Our entrees have arrived. I'm having catch of the day. That is Cajun red snapper with grilled shrimp on top, white rice, southern succotash. I love a good succotash. Hopefully they get it right here in Kentucky. Do you have to say pepper and succotash? No, I don't have to say that. <laughs> it's got bacon, zucchini, squash, peas, tomatoes, red onions, and lemon butter. Oh, I'm All mashed up. It does look good, doesn't it? Yes. Looks better than yours. It does. But yours does look good. Mine looks good. Yours You're looks having better. jambalaya. Yeah, we should trade. <laughs> you can have some of mine. I'm just kidding. So, yeah, mine looks good. I think it just says chicken, sausage, and, rice. Yeah, and rice. And there's one more meat, shrimp. Crostinis. And it's got the bread there. Yeah, that looks pretty good too. Yes. A good looking uh, jambalaya. But I will take a taste of your red snapper because that looks awesome. It's weird. We're up here in Kentucky and what do we order? Cajun food. <laughs> That's, That's our, what looked good on the menu. That is our favorite food, no question. Can't go wrong with Cajun food. Yeah, so we're going to dig in uh, and uh, see if it's any good. Okay. The succotash is quite good. Uh, the shrimp is fantastic. I already okay. gobbled that all down. The fish is pretty good. The Cajun seasoning is a little on the mild side. I don't think they understand here in Kentucky that Cajun means spicy. It's a little lacking in the Louisiana heat. It's still good, but it does need a little bit more spice to it. Uh, your jambalaya? My jambalaya is very, is very good. It's very it's good. tasty, and it has a little bit, a little bit of heat to it. So. It does. Mm hmm. hmm. Not, a, not a whole bunch, but it has a little bit of heat. I don't ever think a jambalaya is real spicy to begin with, but it's got a little bit of heat to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, everyone. So here's the receipt. Totals to 76.32. Two appetizers, two entrees, and a bottle of Coke. All right, everyone. So that's the end of this video. Tomorrow we head to Ohio. Yay, Ohio! Yeah. So people of Ohio, here we come. Uh, that video will be up next. We'll see you there. <laughs>